Welcome back to Tech by Pike. Today we're going to take a more in-depth look at the Gigabyte Aero 16-inch laptop. I unboxed this laptop a couple weeks ago and posted that video and I referred to it as a gaming laptop um, and I had a number of you um, correct me in saying this is a studio laptop and it's geared towards content creators and uh, yeah uh, I made a mistake there. I said gaming out of force of habit because that's what we typically review on this channel. But uh, anyway, uh, there you go. Not a gaming laptop. But we did play some games on this laptop for uh, some FPS scores. So anyway, uh, you'll see those. The uh, specs on this laptop, we got a 12th gen i7 12700H processor. We got that RTX 3070 Ti, 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, max power at 105 watts, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 hertz RAM. Um, you can max that out, upgrade it up to 64 gigs. And then we got that beautiful 16 inch 4K UHD 3840 by 2400 Samsung AMOLED display, one terabyte Gen 4, SSD, there's another slot in there for extra storage, Wi-Fi 6E, and then the chassis is made out of a CNC aluminum, which is pretty nice, although it scuffs really easily and it is a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. Anyway, we're going to go through some specs, we're going to go or go through some benchmarking, we're going to go through some uh, gaming, some features of the laptop, and then I'm going to have some final thoughts at the end. Let's get into it. Here's the 720p camera built into the laptop. I'm going to type here, you can probably hear it. The keyboard has a pretty nice tactile feel, so you can probably hear the clicking. Uh, the one good thing about this camera uh, versus last year's camera on this laptop is the camera is no longer below the screen where you're looking up my nose uh this time it's above here uh on that lip so that that's good the camera itself is okay like i said 720p um so uh good for conferencing calls the gigabyte control center is where you can go to manage some of the performance aspects of this laptop there's several different modes here creator mode turbo mode a gaming mode a meeting mode and then under the dashboard here, you can monitor CPU utilization and temps, memory and GPU as well, uh, storage, battery, and then you have a fan control here, and there's a number of different um, selections, power, eco, normal, and turbo. Uh, you also have RGB uh, fusion, and I think you can control the backlighting of the keyboard, but there's only one color, and that's the white color there and then you have a recovery tab and this is where you can go to get some updates for your laptop. We did some testing with our Spider X Pro uh, on this screen and we got 100% of sRGB, 97% of Adobe RGB, and 99% of P3. This laptop comes with the 12th gen i7 12700H, 14 cores, 20 threads, and our Cinemage R23 scores, um, the multi-core score was 13,319 points, and our CPU single core score was 1,815. So we did a little benchmarking using some synthetic benchmarks out of 3D Mark, and uh, we Worked with Time Spy, Fire Strike, Storage, and a CPU. Starting with our Time Spy score, we got a graphic score of 9,184, CPU score of 10,725, with an overall score of 9,386. And that is below average compared to online scores. Our Fire Strike score, uh, graphic score was 23,472, physics score 25,997, and a combined score of 27. 06. Our online score was 20,822, but it looks like we weren't able to get average or best out of that. And then here is our storage be benchmark score, 2,655. And then we've got our CPU profile here that talks a little bit about max threads and one thread. And then it's got some monitoring there that you can take a look at more in detail. We leveraged user benchmark, and to reiterate, this is not a gaming laptop, but here's some of the stats uh, around performance that we got 
uh, from User Benchmark on this laptop. And you can slow this video down if you want to look at some of these stats in more detail. We did some benchmarking using Blender and our CPU score was 198.64 and we'll take a look at this graph here, check out some more stats. We also used Blender for a GPU score of 3007.05 and here's some additional stats uh, using that benchmark. We also performed some benchmarking using uh, GigBench 5. Our single core score was 1,763. Our multi-core score was 11,774. And if we scroll down here, we can get some more details. And you can definitely slow up this video. Our GigBench 5 OpenCL score was 11,1880. And if we scroll down here, we'll get some uh, more stats, detail. So we played some of our favorite games, starting out with Star Wars Battlefront 2, where we were getting 90 to 110 FPS on average. And, and these games that I'm about to list were all on uh, high settings, and the laptop was also set to high. Destiny 2, we were getting 60 FPS on average. Cyberpunk 2077, it was uh, just barely playable. It, 20 to 24 FPS on average. And then God of War uh, was just on the cusp there with 35 to 38 FPS on average. So we're gonna test the fan noise now and uh, we're using Cyberpunk 2077. They have an internal benchmarking tool and we're gonna turn on our um, noise tester here. So under full load, we're probably talking around 47.2 decibels on average. We're going to test the laptop under heavy load. And right above the CPU and GPU, underneath the screen, you can see it gets the hottest there, around 41, 42 Celsius. If you move down, middle of the keyboard, still around the 40s, but then the palm rest, trackpad, oops, well it gets a little hot right around there, on the uh, right hand side, still around the 30s. So even though this is a studio laptop kind of geared towards uh, content creators, we did do some gaming with some of our favorite games. Tomb Raider, F1 2020, Red Dead Redemption, Horizon Zero Dawn, and this is their internal uh, benchmarking tool that these games have. So for Tomb Raider, we got a maximum of 85 FPS, 60 FPS for average, and minimal was 49 FPS. F1 2020, we got a max of 240 FPS and a minimum of 169 FPS. Red Dead Redemption, we got 62 FF FPS max and then minimum was 31 FPS. And then Horizon Zero Dawn, max is 78 FPS and minimum of 49. The Gigabyte Aero 16 inch laptop. Lots to like about this unit. In my opinion, the star of the show is the screen. Absolutely gorgeous, stunning display. Loved working with it, really. Um, other things that I liked about it was the keyboard. It had nice travel and good return. The trackpad itself was nice and smooth, and so that was great. Uh, the camera was pretty decent. Um, lots of opportunity for upgrading on this particular laptop, so that gets a thumbs up. And then the aluminum CNC chassis, very durable. Uh, the only thing, it's a little bit of a fingerprint magnet, so keep that in mind. Speakers were pretty decent, I think above average in my opinion. And then the fans uh, got loud while gaming, but while doing some productivity work, they didn't really kick in all that much. Uh, a little bit while doing some video editing, but not that bad. So there you go. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about this laptop 
are is the I/O. Um, the I/O on this laptop physically was the three USB-C ports and then the earphone jack. And one of those USB-C ports, if you want other options for ports, uh, you have this AeroHub USB-C 4-in-1, so it takes up one of the ports physically on the laptop. And on this hub, you get the Ethernet jack, the USB-A, you got a display port, and an HDMI. Um, I, I really, I these things get lost, and for me anyway, I, I lose these. They get lost in a bag, I leave them somewhere, and I'm never able to find it. They you know, grow legs and walk away. And so for that, I, I just wish these ports were physically on the laptop and they didn't have to include this. I'm glad they did. I just wish they didn't have to. So there you go. We got this uh, laptop out on the Best Buy website for about $2,200 without tax. And I think for everything you get and the quality of build and the power of this laptop, I think it's a pretty decent buy. So I would definitely, if you're in the market, I would put this on your list of laptops that you're looking at and possibly consider it. So um, there you go. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this from Tech by Pike, hit the subscribe button. We appreciate it. it. helps the channel. Not only that, it gives us an opportunity to bring more videos like this to you. And for that, we appreciate it. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.